So we just had the IBF 30 day check weight for the Gennady Golovkin Kel Brook fight. Golovkin weighed in at 165 pounds, 30 days away from the fight, and Kel Brook weighed in at an incredible 176 pounds. So Kel Brook was 11 pounds heavier than Triple G Gennady Golovkin. And as you can see from the pictures on screen Kel Brook don't look fat he looks in very good condition he looks lean and in shape some people are wondering whether there's some type of trickery going on here you can see Kel Brook standing on the scales but there's no clear image of the actual weight on the scales whereas with Triple G Golovkin you can actually see the weight on the scales Although, with Triple G, you can't see a full-length picture of him. So, some people might argue there could be trickery either way. The implication is, at least on the uh, people who think there might be trickery on the Brook side, the implication is that Brook don't actually weigh 176 pounds. He actually weighs less. But they're trying to play some type of mind game to make Triple G maybe get complacent and think Kel Brook is going to be slow or whatever the case may be, or perhaps they want to make Triple G wary of Kel Brook's power if he's coming into the ring heavier than Triple G expects him to come in. Who knows? Uh, as I say, Kel Brook definitely don't look overweight. He looks in shape. If he really is 176 pounds, that just goes to show what a massive world away he's been all along. Seriously struggling to make 147 if he's in this type of condition at 176 he could you know be a, a super middleweight at this type of size <laughs> so pretty extraordinary people let me know what you think about this is Kell Brook genuinely 176 pounds and what are the implications of that is he going to struggle to lose the 16 pounds by fight time is it wise for him to be this heavy only 30 days out Shouldn't he be lighter? He's clearly, if he is 176, gained muscle. And not especially from lifting weights or anything like that, but simply from allowing his body to digest more calories, more protein and what have you than he normally would. And therefore, there's a natural growth in, in muscle mass there if he is 176. It's going to be interesting to see what Kell Brook weighs in at. Some people are speculating that he might even miss the weight if he really is this big. And it'll be interesting to find out what he weighs on the night because 160 is the middleweight limit. Most people expect Golovkin to come in around 170, 172. If Kell Brook weighs around that same type of weight, <laughs> it'll be interesting, people. <laughs> Let me know what you think of this. Is this a good sign or a bad sign for Kel Brook? Will his size, you know, some people are talking about his size maybe cutting down on his speed. But if he was fat at this type of weight, or if he was chubby at this type of weight, then yeah, you could say it will cut down on his speed. But if his body is fully replenished at this type of weight, and obviously he's not fat, as you can see, if his body's fully replenished and his energy stores are higher than they normally are when he fights at 147 he might end up even being faster than he was at a lighter weight yeah that can happen let me give you an example if you take a heavyweight and you drain that heavyweight down to an unnaturally low weight do you expect the heavyweight to be faster or slower more than likely he's going to be slower like for like a better example oscar de la hoya when he drained down for the manny pacquiao fight he was like a dead man walking. He wasn't faster than he was uh, at his normal weight. He was slower when he fought Manny Pacquiao. And there are many, many other examples like that. You know, if you took a Mike Tyson, for example, who in his prime was, you know, 217, he's only 5'10. If you drained him down to, let's say, light heavyweight, which is possible, <laughs> he'd have to lose a hell of a lot of weight. He might rehydrate back up to two, you know, 190, 195 pounds if you drain him down to 175. Do you think Mike Tyson will be quicker? Hell no. He'd be a dead man walking. 
he'd be slow, he'd be lethargic and whatnot at our light heavyweight. He has the energy to be explosive and fast at 217 pounds. That's where his body was functioning at its optimum. Could that be a case, the case with Kel Brook? Since he's not carrying body fat, if he really is 176 now, and let's say he weighs in over 170 on a night, maybe that will be the best version of Kel Brook. Maybe all the stuff that Brook and his trainer have been saying is actually going to be true. This is what makes the fight intriguing for me because of the fact that Kel Brook is so massive for a welterweight. The size difference in terms of the, the, their body mass, natural body mass between Brook and Golovkin is negligible, it seems. So it's going to be interesting seeing how Kel Brook functions at this type of size. Let me know how you feel in the comment section below. It's your boy Hatman. I'm out.